So will AI take away your job? I don't think we can answer that question today. But the question I can answer is how you can use ChatGPT to become a more effective developer. In this video, I'll demonstrate how you can use ChatGPT as a pair programming tool to generate all the commands you need to import a REST API into GraphQL with Stepsend. In ChatGPT, we can write a prompt that will tell ChatGPT what to, to do. So I want you to take the role of a software developer and then we want to transform a REST API into a GraphQL API. And this is something Stepsend can easily do. So let's type using Stepsend. Also, we want to give ChatGPT a page of the Stepsend docs because otherwise it wouldn't know how to do this because ChatGPT is using its own data models. So we want to insert our own data models and the easiest way to do this is by asking ChatGPT to summarize an existing page from the steps and documentation. From the steps and documentation on stepsand.com slash docs, you can press transform REST to GraphQL, and this will bring you to a page that will explain how to transform an existing REST API into GraphQL. So we'll just copy paste this, and then we bring this over to our ChatGPT prompt. In ChatGPT, we will just copy paste our entire docs page, press enter, and then ChatGPT will start to summarize this page. And after it has finished summarizing this docs page, we and actually ask ChatGPT to create the commands to import the practical dev REST API into a GraphQL API using Stepsend. We've just learned from ChatGPT how to get started with Stepsend. So let's try and simulate these commands inside a VS Code project. First, we needed to run the steps and login command, which is something I've already done. So I'm already logged in. If you aren't logged in yet, make sure to follow the instructions from ChatGPT. The second one is importing the practical dev REST API using the steps and import curl command. For this, let's go back to the ChatGPT prompt and see the right command. The command it gave us is steps and import curl, and then we need to append the the right endpoint and also the right flags to name our query and also to name the directory in which we will import the GraphQL API. We can just copy paste this command directly in our terminal. And as you can see, we will be importing the particle dev REST APIs with the correct flags. Once I press enter, Stepsend will first prompt us for the name of our endpoint. And in this scenario, let's go for API slash GraphQL GPT. Then you can see a couple of new files being created that will contain our GraphQL schemas and also some configuration for Stepsend itself. As you can see in this file, we have a GraphQL type for that's called article entry. And then we at the bottom have a query called articles. And this query will call our practical dev REST API endpoint. And then following the prompt in ChatGPT, we can just run steps and start to deploy this GraphQL API, after which we should be able to query it directly from the steps and dashboard. So let's run steps and start. This will deploy your GraphQL schema and then make it available in Stepsend's cloud. As you can see from the response in the terminal, we can go to the Stepsend dashboard from which we should be able to send requests to our GraphQL API. After opening the Stepsend dashboard, you will find this playground, which we call the Stepsend GraphQL Explorer, that you can use to query your GraphQL endpoint. Of course, we could use the built-in documentation to find which queries we can use, but ChatGPT also suggested a query that we can directly try. In ChatGPT, we can find this query that will return a list of articles, including its ID, description, publish date, and also some information around the user. So again, we can just copy this code and bring it over to the steps and dashboard. In the dashboard, we should copy this command, or actually this query, in the left-hand side of the page, after which we can run the request, and then you can see the response from the GraphQL API on the right. We retrieve the ID, the title, the publish date, and also some name, and also the name of the user that created this blog post. And this data is coming from GraphQL. 
What Stepson does, it will send a request to the Protocol Dev REST API so you don't have to interact with the REST API directly. Instead, you'll do this through GraphQL. So what else can we do? Let's head back to ChatGPT and ask ChatGPT to expand our schema with more information. So what I want to do next, I want to change my query to get all the articles from Practical Dev into a query that will only get uh, my own articles from Practical Dev. For this, I need to use a new endpoint. So let's start typing the prompt in ChatGPT. So great. Uh, what I want to do next, I want to change my articles query. So my query called articles, articles, and yeah. Oh, I made a small mistake here. So let me go back and stop generating. And I can actually change my earlier prompt or I can also, so I can change it, but I can also type a new prompt. So instead of changing it like this, I can start typing. So great. Now I want to change my query called articles, query called articles. So it will take a new endpoint, so a different endpoint that needs a header value. And this header value is for the API key. So the new URL is coming from practical dev. I can copy it from here. And the header value is called API key. So let's see what ChatGPT comes up with. So it requires an API key header. Uh, first, we need to locate the auto generated schema file inside the devto directory, um, which is actually not called devto.graphql, but it's called devto slash index.graphql. So small mistake here. It looks like ChatGPT wants me to rename my query from articles to my articles, uh, which is fine. Not sure if I will be doing this, but it is perfectly fine if you would like to do this. And in here we need to points, point towards our configuration called devto-api key. And this should be found from a new file called config.jml. So this is all correct. And of course, in this file, you need to set your actual uh, practical dev API key. So this is something we'll be doing later. Uh, and then from step four, it looks like, yeah, so it looks like it, it wants us to link the config.jml file uh, from our index.graphql file in the main, uh, main path of our project. I don't think we need to do this. I'm actually pretty sure we don't need to do this, uh, but we can try it anyways and see what happens. And finally, it suggests the query that we can use to try this out. And once ChatGPT is finished, we can actually try it out in VS Code. Back in VS Code, we can apply the changes ChatGPT suggested. So we need to change the uh, query called articles to a query called my articles, and then link up the configuration right here. Uh, actually, there's one small mistake here as my article returns a array of article entries instead of just a single one. So let me save this. Also, let me create the config.jml file. Config.jml file like this. Uh, and in here, we need to paste the code to have configuration called devto-api-key. And of course, we need to give it our API key. So once I save this, I can just run steps and start, which will redeploy my updates to the GraphQL schema to steps and cloud, after which I would be able to retrieve it from the uh, steps and dashboard. Once I go back to the steps and dashboard, I should be able to try out my updated query that will get only the articles that I wrote myself. In the steps and dashboard, I needed to change my query articles to my articles and once I run this, I should be able to get some data. Uh, instead, I actually get an error message because I probably still need to pass my Practical Dev API key. In the documentation for the Practical Dev REST API, uh, you can find an explanation on finding your API key. So you actually need to go to the Practical Dev website 
And under Dev API Keys, you can create a new API key, which you can then use inside this GraphQL API configuration. I've already done this, so let me copy paste it into the config.jml file, after which I should be able to uh, rerun this query. And in that case, it should actually work as now we're passing the API key to it. In the config.jml file, I will add my API key and I'll make sure to uh, blur this whenever I release the video and save it. You can see from your terminal, if you still have steps and start running, it will see the file change in config.jml and redeploy your API. In the steps and dashboard, I will make sure to refetch my GraphQL schema and then rerun my query. But it seems like I still have the HTTP unauthorized error. So actually let me go back to ChatGPT uh, and ask whatever is going wrong. But before going back to ChatGPT, I actually want to go to the steps and documentation first, because maybe there's something that ChatGPT isn't aware of. So I will go to the section called Manage Configuration and Keys, and I will just copy this part and then paste it into ChatGPT later on. So I'll be pasting uh, this entire part up until database configuration as I'm working with the REST API. So copy paste this. So back in ChatGPT, let me tell ChatGPT whatever is going wrong. So the header uh, doesn't seem doesn't seem to be passed to the my articles query. My articles query uh, correctly. And then I also want to pass the documentation that I just copy pasted. So let me ask ChatGPT to send me a new send me a new code. Yeah, new code block uh, based on the following documentation. And then I'll just copy paste the uh, documentation page I copied from the steps and website. So once I paste this in here, it should give ChatGPT sufficient information to provide me with an updated code block that actually works. So we need to update the config.jml file, which isn't located in the devto directory as I put it in the root. As you can see, it now appends a header dot for my API key configuration. So probably this is whatever was missing. It also tells me to move the config jaml to the root of your project. I probably already did this by default as I built the steps and GraphQL API before. It still tells me to update the index.graphql file to reference the config.jaml file. Uh, so let us try that later on. First, let's focus on getting the API key to work. And then of course we need to redeploy our schema using steps and start. And it also provides us with an updated query uh, that we can run. So let's go back to VS Code and see if this small change will actually make our GraphQL schema work as expected. In VS Code, I still have my uh, steps and start command running in the terminal and I'm going to change my configuration set so it takes header.api key, and of course it also has my API key from Practical Dev. Once I save this, the steps and CLI will redeploy uh, my GraphQL schema, and from the dashboard, I should now be able to finally get all my blog posts from Practical Dev. In the steps and dashboard, I need to refresh uh, my GraphQL schema, and then rerun this again. And this time, it actually gets my articles. So these are all written by me, uh, as you can see here. So this time the header value with my practical dev API key is correctly passed onto the, um, to the underlying REST API. There was one other suggestion that ChatGPT did, and actually let's try it out by heading back to VS Code. ChatGPT suggested that we should reference the config.jml file from our um, schema file here. So within the SDL, it suggests that we should also link up the configuration. So let me see what happens once we start doing this, uh, put the configuration in like this, and then save it. It should either work or the steps in CLI will give us an error as we have some 
unsuspected results. Which actually we have as Stepsem doesn't support linking up the config.jaml here. So even though um, JGPT might suggest you something, it isn't always correct. So we saw the first time we tried to use JGPT um, to pass the header to the REST API, we get an error. And then the second time it asked us to put a reference to config.jaml inside our main index.graphql file, which is also incorrect. But the steps in CLI luckily got my mistake and I'm getting an error in my CLI watcher. In this video, you learned how to use ChatGPT as a pair programming tool when building GraphQL APIs with Stepsam. We actually saw that most of the results coming from ChatGPT are pretty accurate up to a small number of mistakes, but these mistakes were easily spotted. The Stepsam CLI even helped you to spot these mistakes. So this shows you just how easy it is to use a tool like ChatGPT to help you build a GraphQL API. And I'm pretty eager to learn whatever you're building with Stepsan, ChatGPT, or GraphQL in general. So if you have any suggestions for projects we should build, please leave them in the comments. And also, if you're enjoying this video, make sure to like it and subscribe to our channel.